I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how you ended up here. I don't know how I ended up here. Um, this is something that I wanted to do. I don't know what this is, but I know that I'm being obedient to the spirit in doing whatever this is. So basically, faith has always been around me. There has never been a time in my life that I was not aware of who God was. Now, of course, there's a difference in being, you know, singing as after school Bible school with your cousins on Wednesdays um, and being a grown adult who has now moved into her own spot and has graduated from college and has been just thrown to the wolves that that we call men. OK, just have basically been through it um, with the men. So just now basically being an adult and having adult things and now knowing god as an adult is a completely different thing i mean the songs that we were singing we weren't we were saying it we knew what we were saying but it's just crazy now trying to get closer to god and having my own testimonies and my own trials and tribulations and things and then the way i feel being able to relate to a song that i was singing on wednesday night when i was four or you know, a um, needing God and the words that I am saying being a part of a song that I was once singing at church when I was a part of the choir. Now all of these things, it's like, wait, something is dinging in the back of here, you know, like, and I, I'm like now trying to reach back to those, like, and everything is just making a full circle. And it's an amazing journey. Like, this is fun. This is fun. It is trying. It is horrible at the same time it is it is um i mean every i feel like almost any word you could say there are words it has not been but i don't know this is just it's hard to describe what i'm going through uh, spiritually mentally financially educationally um any ali that you could say even like sexually as an adult i know anyways we need to talk about that but to where all of these things, like it's almost like I'm awakening up again. Somebody used the word reju rejuvenation, you know, feeling revived. Like this is such an amazing feeling that I want other people to be feeling as well with me. As in me growing in, growing closer to Christ helps me realize who I am and live in who I am. Um, there are things about me that I absolutely hated. Like, I'm very sensitive. I'm very emotional. I'm very dramatic. All of those. And those are things that when I was little, you know, my dad would be like, oh, you just calm down, monkey. He would say that all the time. Calm down, monkey. And now I tell myself, calm down, monkey. And it's, it helps me now. But there are there are things. Wait, what was I saying? Oh, things that I didn't like about myself. Now I'm realizing that like God makes no mistakes and being able to take those things and being dramatic and being sensitive, being passionate, being very empathetic. You know, I was always mad at myself because I was always crying. Like, why are you crying? Like, there was a point in time, time in my life that I would feel like I was crying every day. I mean, this was like high school, like every day. And there's a SpongeBob episode where Squidward was counting how many times uh, Squidward Squidward was counting how many times Spongebob cried that day and that's what comes to my mind every time I think about that time in my life um, I mean I'm still a crybaby now of course but I now use those things that I did not like about myself or that I was very um, self conscious about now I still am but I'm realizing why God made me the way that I am you know the places that he's taking me the doors he's opening up the doors he's closing all show me you know everything he, he does everything on purpose like he knows what he's doing so all of this is just so fun and I have people in my life like my loved ones my friends who are spiritual I'm dragging them along with me on this journey okay I'm dragging them you know I got friends who I don't know where their spiritual journey is and that's fine because my friends are not a lot of my friends are not as spiritual as I am and that's perfectly fine now, I love them enough and they are important to me enough that I am dragging them along with me so um i just want to be able to like i guess what i want to do is just record through this process so i can hopefully you know maybe some people will be going through this with me like i told you i got all these people who in my life who are ministers and preachers and stuff that's not i don't know what god's plan is but that's not my plan <laughs> that's not my plan but what my plan is 
is to through this journey like I want to be a thousand percent me I want to be a hundred percent me we are not supposed to cage God you don't cage God you don't put him in a box like there's really no way if you are then you are doing it wrong honey because he can't be put into no box how are we supposed to we can't be putting ourselves in stuff into boxes if that makes sense of how we worship him and how we receive him I plan to be a thousand percent myself you know, there are some things that maybe I might express that the next Christian or the next believer might say, oh, God doesn't like that or God, you know, whatever they want to say. But I want to be sure that I am being me. And it's, it, it only has to do with me and God. Like, I'm trying to make it to eternity. Like, this is only a short, this is just so small in the grand scheme of things like i'm 25 years old but those 25 years are literally like two minutes not even two minutes probably like three seconds in eternity with him so just i just want to make sure that i i'm doing what i want to do here you know jesus went and died for our sins god knows that we're gonna be sinning okay that don't mean that you go out like what can i do let's purge but at the same time like i just want to be authentic and be who i am and as long as i'm serving him and I am putting others first and I'm doing, you know, all of the things because he put it in the Bible for what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, he put it he put it in there and, and I, what I'm doing right now, so this is almost 10 minutes long now without editing it. Right now I am doing a 30-day um, scripture writing challenge. Um, I did not make it up. I got it from, I think the website is called I Believe. Every month I just Google and say, uh, I just search it and it comes up. Um, so I did not create it. I don't take credit for any of this. Okay. I don't take credit for any of this. I'm just sharing what I'm going through. Cause hopefully somebody want to do it with me. Cause I like to talk. So now I'm just talking to the phone and hopefully somebody will say that they want to talk with me. They want to do it with me. This is my, I did it September, October, November. Now I'm doing it December. This is my fourth month doing the scripture writing challenge. So all you do is, um, the point of the challenge is to obviously to dive into the word. The word is just so overwhelming it's just so much there's so many people there's Job. there's esther there's jesus of course there's matthew mark luke and john heard good news and they passed it on there's just so much in there to learn so many lessons and stuff so this just helps us dive in so all you do is there the scripture they have a scripture for every single day so you write the scripture and then you um you write the scripture then you write a takeaway whatever you got from it i like to go um, back and forth between verses be, I mean between versions because it helps me understand it better I normally go between the ERV which is the easy to read version that's my number one version easy to read version basically the hood version is what I like to call it because it just tells you what you need to know easy to read version and the message and uh, the new living translation normally I go back and forth and I sprinkle a little bit of King James version because that's you know art thou like that's the that's the you know when you want the whatever that is, you know. So I go back and forth from those versions. So I write that, I write the scripture of the day, and then I write the takeaway, and then I write the T. The T the is hot every day, okay? The T is hot. Um, it is from a prophet, a lady. Her name is Marsha Burns. Marsha, if you ever see this, Marsha Burns, so she gives these daily devotionals every day. Like, she puts them out every day. And when I tell you they come right down in your pew, like, they come right down in your pew. Like, they, they, they're so direct. They're so, 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 so direct to whatever you have going on in your life. I can promise you that. So she calls them the small straws. I don't necessarily know where she got that name from because you can't find too much about Marsha Burns anywhere can't find her i've tried to look for marcia i found one video like it's like a loophole so i think marcia's real name it could be uh jesus's helper because i feel like jesus is whispering into her ear and saying exactly what we need to hear because i just don't i don't think i understand how direct it is i'm going to read today's and you'll see how direct it is i want you to when i read it hopefully you can sit and you can think about it ponder on it see how direct it is to your life um, so I write that down and then I either write a prayer or I just say a prayer out loud, sum it all up. I do it in the morning times um, so I can, you know, set the tone for the rest of the day. Hopefully that's the idea. Um, and then that's it. I send it out to people right now. I got a list of 
is my list of people that I send it out to. Shout out to y'all. A couple of these people have done a, a, like a decent amount of these with me. And then some people, this is their first time. Everybody is on different levels of their spirituality. Maybe you just got saved yesterday. Or maybe you are like me and you done had, you've had him around you all the time. But now it's time for him to be direct in your life. Am I giving the benediction? That's what I feel like I'm doing. <sighs> but yeah. Like I said in the beginning, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know, like, I just got to do it. I just have to do it. I like to write. I like to go back and look, you know, times, like years, I don't want to say hours, months, years later back and look back and see how much you've grown. So hopefully that's what these videos will do for me. Um, I'm putting it out there for anybody to join me. Of course, again, I'm not nobody's minister. I'm not nobody's pastor. My dad tries to say I'm evangelizing. If that's what you want to say, I, I'm just a, I'm just a God fearing woman. I'm just a God fearing woman. That's who I am. Okay, and I like to talk. I like to talk things through. So I would absolutely love. For, you know, people to join me with this. Like, I'm thinking about, like, doing, like, a Bible study type thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. I just have to start. I just have to start. I just have to do it. I just have to do it. I just got to do it. Okay, let me read what today's tea is. Okay, the tea is ready. The tea is hot. Okay. There you go. The daily tea, it says, examine yourself to see whether you live in the spirit or not. You will know and be known by your fruits. Check your motives, attitudes, and behaviors, which should align with the fruit of the spirit. If not, you are more likely than not exhibiting the works of the flesh and your carnal nature. Strive to maintain spiritual relationship with me and to be an example of my kingdom. That first sentence talking about examine yourself and whether you live with the spirit or not. It's very convicting. Where's the test? I guess I'm supposed to give it to myself. And so then it says it gives the um, the scripture to go with it, which is not. There's a different scripture that you would be writing down with your takeaway. That's from the list. This is the scripture that. Marsha already provides that goes with the T. It says in Galatians 5, uh, 19 to 23, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, self ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand. Just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So when I looked at I remember again one of the songs that we used to say, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the, the fruit, the fruit of the spirit um, song that we used to sing at after school Bible school, and we used to name them out. And all I remember most is literally self control, and that's the one that stuck out out of them. So I went ahead and I just searched and um, looked up what the fruit of the spirit in the Bible. Oh, I did before this spirit in the Bible, and it says I just googled it. So when you Google, if you Google it, this is what it's going to say. It says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is a biblical term that sums up the nine attributes of a person or community living in accord with the Holy Spirit. According to chapter five of Apostle to, to, the, to the Galatians, that's what they call it, to the Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control so those are all of the fruits of the spirit and so then let me read it again it says examine yourself to see whether you live in the spirit or not 
you will know and be known by your fruit. So all those things, your self-control, your love, how you love people. Um, what were the other ones? See, I told you self-control, the only one that I can remember. All of those things show if you are in, in align with the spirit. Patience, how patient you are with people. Those are all um, going to show you if you're living, if you're in line with the spirit. It says check your motives, your attitudes, and behaviors, which should align with the fruit of the spirit. So you got the fruit of the spirit, the patience, self-control, all these things should align with your motives, your attitudes, and your behaviors. Those should go together. They should go together, Jania. They should go together. Okay? If not, you are more likely than not exhibiting the works of the flesh and your carnal nature. So basically, you're giving in to temptation. You're being real fleshly, real worldly. You know, you're being real um, real earthly, not in the spirit. So you're in the spirit. If you're not, if you're not in the spirit, you, all those other things, that's what you are. So it says, strive to maintain a spiritual relationship with me and to be an example of my kingdom. So, I mean, that's just obvious. Just try to, we as Christians just need to exhibit those fruits of the spirit in everything that we do. And then that was just what Marcia said. And then in the scripture, it literally says, because my bestie, she texts back <laughs> and was like, so basically you don't do none of that. It says uh, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you're not going to get all his goodness here. And yet darn sure ain't going to be able to let be let into the pearly gates on judgment day. Okay? So that's really what I got from it. Let's try to do, read it over and over again. Um, this is like, this has been one of the most prominent connections I have felt with God. Like when I read this, I feel like he's talking directly to me. Like I'd be so excited for the next day to come so I can read what he has to say for today. So I know what to expect. Um, so yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. I don't want these videos to be too long. So thank you, Jesus. I did it. <laughs> I started. Now we just got to be consistent. So I will see you myself tomorrow.